Hey everyone, in this video we'll look at the applications of hydrocarbons and also the, the positive as well as negative implications of obtaining as well as using hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are organic compounds extracted from crude oil, which is also known as petroleum. Crude oil is a type of fossil fuel, the others being natural gases and coal. Crude oil takes millions of years to form and can be found in underground oil reservoirs shown in the picture here. Once these reservoirs are located, a fairly large hole is drilled into the ground to allow a transportation pipe to be delivered to the reservoir. Since these reservoirs are underground, complete extraction of crude oil will create cavities underground. These can cause the overlying structure to collapse due to the loss of mechanical support that was provided by the crude oil in the reservoir. It is important to know that crude oil is a mixture consisting of many different types of hydrocarbons. Fractional distillation is used to separate these hydrocarbons based on their boiling point. This is a very effective separation technique for crude oil because hydrocarbons have vastly different boiling points, mainly due to their differences in molecular weight and therefore dispersion forces. Let's take a look at fractional distillation in more detail. The extracted crude oil enters the chamber at a very high temperature such that it is above the boiling point of most hydrocarbons in the mixture. In terms of the physical states, most hydrocarbons at this point, at the very bottom of the chamber, are gases. Only a small portion are in liquid state and they are first separated from the mixture as you can see here. In this picture, these are the fuel oil and the residue also known as bitumen for road construction. As the remaining gaseous hydrocarbons rise up in the chamber, the temperature of the chamber decreases. When the temperature reaches the boiling point of a particular hydrocarbon, it is condensed into liquid state and therefore separated from the mixture in the same way as before. This method of separation is repeated until all the components of crude oil is successfully separated. In general, fractional distillation separates larger hydrocarbons, i.e. those with higher boiling points first, followed by smaller hydrocarbons, i.e. those with lower boiling points. Once hydrocarbons are separated and obtained, what are they used for? Alkanes are used as fuel. Common examples are methane, which is also considered as a natural gas, petrol, which is octane, diesel, all of these compounds here, petrol and diesel in particular, can be found in most petrol stations. Alkanes are useful as fuel because they are easily combustible and they release relatively large amounts of energy in the process that is combustion. In a more chemistry related setting, hydrocarbons like hexane and cyclohexane are commonly used as solvents to dissolve non-polar substances. And this is because hexane, cyclohexane, and almost all hydrocarbons are nonpolar compounds. In addition, waxes, for example those in candles, and previous discussed bitumen in roads are also derived from alkanes. Unlike alkanes, alkenes are more commonly used as starting materials to produce other organic compounds due to the greater chemical reactivity. Throughout this module, you will learn about some of these compounds and the reactions involved. This includes haloalkanes, alcohols, and polymers such as plastics. Uses of alkynes are very similar to alkenes because they also are chemically reactive, and therefore they are used as starting materials for the synthesis of other compounds, in particular pharmaceutical molecules. In addition, the alkyne ethyne, shown on the right here, is also used as a fuel for welding. As you're probably aware, obtaining and using hydrocarbons entails numerous social, economic, and most importantly, environmental implications. As previously discussed, extraction of crude oil from reservoirs creates large cavities underground, which may cause the overlying structure to collapse. This has significant consequences on the habitat of flora and fauna that previously occupied the affected land. Crude oil extraction sites are also commonly located above water bodies. If the transportation and or storage of the oil that's being extracted is compromised in any way, 
The spillage of oil poses serious environmental damages and is difficult to resolve. The socio-cultural implications of using hydrocarbons are largely positive. They are used as fuel for transportation, industrial uses, and the production of electrical energy. They are also used to produce a wide range of materials such as fabric, medical and engineering goods, as well as polymers such as PVC, which is a type of plastic found in pipes, nylon and polyesters, which are common ingredients in clothing. Due to the high demand, countries that have access to these oil reservoirs have experienced significant economic growth for the past century. Globally, a large proportion of electrical energy is still derived from burning fossil fuel because this is a relatively cheap method of producing energy. Undoubtedly, access to electrical energy is the cornerstone of technological advancement for both developed and developing countries around the world. However, since crude oil is a non-renewable source of energy and takes a very long time to form, its declining supply is causing recent increases in its price, and this is becoming an economic concern for developing countries. Environmental implications of using hydrocarbons are largely negative. Use of hydrocarbons as a fuel produces both toxic chemicals and greenhouse gases that are damaging to not only the environment, but us humans who occupy the environment. Many materials produced from hydrocarbons for example, by the plastic industry, are also non-biodegradable. This concern has become increasingly apparent in the recent years due to the accumulation of goods that are made from hydrocarbons. Lastly, let's talk about disposal of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are volatile substances. This means they vaporize or turn into gas form very easily. And many hydrocarbon fumes that is, when they are gases, are toxic to humans. Hydrocarbons are also flammable, which means they combust easily. Incomplete combustion, that is, when the supply of oxygen is limited, produces carbon monoxide, which is again another toxic chemical that we want to avoid. Due to these two properties of hydrocarbons, it is important for students to dispose hydrocarbons into the organic waste container instead of the sink. In addition, any organic compounds containing the halogens, that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and or iodine, must be disposed into a very special container called the halogenated organic waste container, as you can see on the right hand side. This is because these compounds which contain halogens are extremely toxic, especially when you inhale or ingest them in small quantities.